All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the Cappuccino tool, which is useful for creating real-time animation on our objects. And so I'll show you a couple of different uses for this, um, interacting with simulations in real time, or maybe trying to rough in some timing for something like a ball bouncing. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are with our two basic setups for today, one involving a bouncing ball, another involving cloth and a collider. Uh, and we'll start with the bouncing ball here. Um, so first and foremost, if you haven't used Cappuccino before, it is this tool right there. We can pop it open. You can see there's a couple of different modes to work with. You can specify when or how much time you want to be able to work with here in Cappuccino, whether it's the entire project, the preview range. And the preview range is this area right here whereas project would be the outer numbers, okay? You can specify render settings, which is what you've specified in your output section here, right? And then lastly, user defined. So if we want to specify something different than any of those other three, we absolutely can. You can choose whether it starts at the current time um, or you know, perhaps what you've defined in here, whether or not you want it to rewind. Uh, if you are working with Dynamics, you are better off making it start um, at the beginning or making sure you are on frame zero when you, you begin this. Uh, but we're starting with our bouncing ball, so that isn't as big of a deal. You can also decide what you want to animate. So, you know, position, scale, rotation, PLA, which stands for point level animation, so animated points, um, as well as hierarchy if you want it to keyframe um, the children of whatever you have selected. I'm going to make sure I have the ball selected. I'm going to make sure I've clicked on start real time it can be a little bit strange because you know it was highlighted now things aren't we should be good to go and then it'll start keyframing whatever properties you kind of start moving something on so since this is in the middle here i'm going to use the corner part of this gizmo to, to control things on the y and x we can see things are starting to go and as i drag this out i get my motion path now because i was set to user it stopped after 90 so i'm going to set this to project and hit start and we should just be able to overwrite this again. So I can keep going, doing some bouncing, doing whatever. And since it falls off, maybe we just have it go down and off. And when you let go, deselect any of the handles or in this case, parts of the gizmo, the animation stops. I can kind of scoot this over and we can see what we got. So not the prettiest of animations by any means, but for roughing in some timing, for getting an idea of maybe what we're looking for, um, you know, not a bad way to start. You can then, of course, come into your timeline. And you absolutely would want to clean these up. In fact, there is, uh, you can reduce the keys in here, um, though really it wouldn't be too hard just to kind of come in and select, you know, pretty much everything like this and do that. Although I'd probably want to do one position property at a time you know, maybe something like that to help kind of clean things up, make sure we have, yeah, something like that. But hopefully you kind of get the idea that while it is going to create some animation, it's going to, you know, some interesting animation or it can, you are going to end up with a lot of keyframes and you're going to need to do something about that because it's probably going to be um, a little bit kind of jerky compared to what you might want. Um, you can see in our curves here just how this isn't as smooth as we could get had we just done this perhaps a different method. Um, the other thing to point out about Cappuccino is that it did create keyframes for not just my position properties, X, Y, and Z, my scale, as well as my rotation. And I didn't even do anything on those. So it is going to create some extra animation, some extra keyframes, not the end of the world, but something to keep in mind. It can make it a little bit trickier to, you know, make some adjustments here if um, you know, I have all of these properties I need to deal with filling up my timeline. So let's take a look at dynamics because, um, that's really where I, I think this, um, comes in handy the most, you know, it'd be nice if, um, when we hit play, we could select an object that has like a collider and we could keyframe this movement we're getting. And, you know, this could be a simulation with cloth. It could be a, you know, rope simulation. It could be whatever, but you know, it'd be nice to be able to really art direct this and kind of get something exactly the way I want in real time instead of having to go, you know, and set the position keyframes um, 
you know, every 10, 50 or, or however often I need them. And we can use Cappuccino to help us with this. Selected my collider, I'll come back to Cappuccino, make sure I have it set to real time here. Um, and now I can just get ready to move this. And you can see I clicked and moved this, my cloth fell down. And so now as I do this, it is going to interact just like it was before, but it's also maintaining our motion path and recording that back and forth. And I just did it on a single axis to keep things simple here. Now, what's a little bit different about this is that if I go to play this back, what you're gonna notice is eventually, I should say, the cube, all right? Actually, it looks like it did work on the plane. It didn't previously. So if for whatever reason it d didn't record that movement on the um, cloth here, okay, then that's actually pretty easy to fix. And I'm a bit confused where it's coming from because it doesn't look like anything is cached. Um, so that's definitely something perhaps a bit strange that I wasn't expecting and didn't see in my tests. And what I was going to show is that all you need to do in order to fix that, if for whatever reason your simulation doesn't work, is now come back and cache this. And still not a bad thing to do anyway. Uh, but that way, you know, if your simulation um, didn't end up caching or, or saving when you did that, uh, it will then kind of reevaluate it. But the movement on our collider here would have already been keyframed. And so, you know, we really should get the same thing we were having previously and I'm not sure we'd really be able to tell the difference here. Um, but if nothing else, this is now cached, this is now, now saved uh, in our simulation tag here. And this can make it easier to render this on a render farm um, or whatever the case may be. So that is a look at our cappuccino tool here for creating real-time animation. Right, we saw it with the bouncing ball. Um, we've seen it with our cube as well as dynamics. And yeah, I don't know why it it you know kept the uh, animation on our cloth here. I mean that's a nice bonus. But if for whatever whatever reason it uh, doesn't, like I said, then you just want to come in and cache it, and it will look at the animation of our collider here, our cube, and make sure it takes that into account as it caches it. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. And until next time, take care.